good evening everyone so today we are going to start a new chapter which is related to recurrence relation so for the given combinatorial problem first we will see how do we write down the associated recurrence relation and in the coming lectures we will see how to solve the recurrence relation so first consider the definition of a recurrence relation so it relates a n to one or more of the proceeding terms a not a1 a n minus 1 yes along with the initial conditions so for example you can write a n as a n minus 1 a n is equal to a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2 plus a n minus 3 and so on and based on this we will see how many initial conditions are required so first see few questions how do we write down the recurrence relation and in these questions we will see we will talk about the initial conditions so find the recurrence relation for the number of the ways to arrange n distinct objects in a row yes so whenever we have to write the recurrence relation the first step is to define a n what is a n yes so a n would be it denotes the number of arrangements of n distinct objects yes this is what need to be find out distinct objects now we have to arrange n objects so the first object whichever it is can be arranged in n ways because there are n possibilities after arranging the first object there remains n minus 1 objects which can be arranged in a n minus 1 ways because this is how a n is defined a n is number of arrangement of n objects which means a n minus 1 is the number of the arrangement of n minus 1 objects so therefore my a n would be n times you arrange the first object and the remaining objects would be arranged in a n minus 1 time so this is the multiplication principle which came into the picture yes so if if i have to solve it then this would be same as n n minus 1 a n minus 2 and so on and in the end it will become n factorial which is same as p n comma n let's move to the next question which says that we need to climb an staircase having n stairs and there are two ways to climb either one stair at a time or two stairs at a time that's it now we need to find the recurrence relation for a n for the number of different ways to climb the staircase so again the first step is to write down what is a n so a n is the number of different ways to climb the n stair staircase now the next step is that how do we begin the process how how many ways are there to climb so there are only two ways yes so either one stair at a time or two stairs when you climb one stair then there remains n minus one stairs when you climb two stairs there remains n minus two now we have already assumed what is a n it means the first stair is climbing one way and the remaining n minus 1 can be climbed in a n minus 1 way or you can say that initially two stairs these two because this is the only way one stair two stairs at a time these two stairs are climbed in one way and remaining n minus 2 are climbed in n minus a n minus 2 ways it means my a n is a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2. Yes, this is known as the Fibonacci sequence or Fibonacci relation. At the same time, if we talk about the initial condition, so a 1 which is number of ways to climb one stair staircase, so it is only 1, a 2, so number of ways to climb 2 stair staircase. Now, two stair staircase means either you can do one stair at a time and then the other one or the other way is you climb two at a time. So, one, two, one steps or one, two steps. 
so two ways are there therefore a2 is equal to 2 so these are my initial conditions now suppose we want to draw a straight lines on a piece of paper such that every pair of lines intersect but no three lines intersect at a common point so in how many regions we need to write down the reference relation to see in how many regions do these n lines divide the plane so we'll start with the simple observation that what is happening if this is the plane and if i draw one straight line then it divides the plane into two regions which means a1 is equal to 2 now after one line the next line should intersect with this one and that gives me a2 is equal to 4 1 2 3 4 now when i draw a3 so one line is there two line is there so whenever you can observe that for a3 when you draw the third line this is my third line then it always partition because it is intersecting two lines so it always creates three new regions something like this if there are two lines so one region is here two is here three is here so this is how it is that these three regions are created because already they are four regions so it means that whenever you draw the nth line then it creates n new regions and so it is create n new regions therefore a n is when you draw nth line so you have n new regions and what are the remaining regions the remaining regions are a n minus 1 so that gives us the required recurrence relation and we have already computed the initial conditions let's try one more question so recurrence relation for the number of different ways to hand out a piece of chewing gum worth one dollar candy bar ten dollar donut twenty dollars on successive days until n dollar worth of food has been given away yes so we need to distribute this n dollar into three ways either by giving one dollar at a time or ten dollar or twenty dollar yes so there are only three possibilities so when i give one dollar then what will happen there are n minus 1 dollars which can be distributed in a n minus 1 ways 10 dollars then there are a n minus 10 dollars and if i distribute 20 dollars then there are a n minus 20 yes so my the recurrence relation is a n is equal to a n minus 1 plus a n minus 10 plus a n minus 20 now what about the initial condition so initial condition if i just talk about a1 then it's one yes because you can give only one dollar if i take about a naught then my a naught is also one what is a naught a naught is distributing zero dollars yes so there is only one way to distributing zero dollars you do not give anything to anyone also you can say that in in other way you can look at it at that a naught can be zero also but mathematically also if you see for example if you have to compute a 10 then a 10 would be a 9 plus a 0 yes and this a 0 is always coming into the picture i cannot neglect it this is the initial condition and now if you take a naught is equal to 0 then your a1 is a naught which comes out to be 0 but which is not true because a1 is 1 so it means that mathematically also and combinatorially also we assume a naught to be equal to 1 which means there is one way to give nothing that is giving 0 pieces to each of them number of binary sequences of length n with no consecutive zeros so no consecutive zeros means 
there are two possibilities you start with one you start with g when you start with one then there are n minus one remaining positions yes these remaining positions if they are filled with a n minus one ways it means these n minus one positions have no consecutive zeros which implies in total in total the n positions are there has no consecutive zero yes so if i start with one they are remaining n minus one position if i fill with a n minus one ways it means these n minus one position has no consecutive zero which in total also implies that that the total n position has no consecutive zero if i start with zero yes and i say that the remaining n minus 1 positions i fill with n a n minus 1 ways which have no consecutive zero so for example you fill it with 0 1 1 1 1 1 so this a n minus 1 means n minus 1 position have no consecutive zero this example but in total n position when you see it as n position it has consecutive zero which creates a problem it means that i cannot say that if i choose one if i choose zero then the remaining positions can be filled in a n minus one better to say that if i start with zero then i must take the next position as one and then n minus two positions i must fill with a n minus two ways because now whatever you choose the remaining n minus 2 has no consecutive 0 which implies the remaining one has the no consecutive zeros total n positions have no consecutive 0 so it means that my a n is a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2 provided a naught is equal to 1 and a1 is equal to 2 a1 is equal to 2 because sequence of length 1 can be 0 or 1 and a0 is equal to 0 which is for empty sequence because i cannot say that there is no empty sequence there is always an empty sequence yes this notion is there in the literature so a0 is equal to 0 means the empty sequence so there is one empty sequence and there are two sequences of length 1 So in the same way the next question is number of binary sequences of length n with no block of three consecutive zeros so same logic would apply which i have either i can uh, start with zero if i start with one then it is a n minus one the same logic if i start with zero and after zero there are two possibilities either there comes 1 or there comes 0 if there comes 1 then a n minus 2 because there is no 3 consecutive 0 but this creates a problem again after 2 0 if I if I consider a n minus 2 ways then there could be some sequence like this as in the previous case which is not allowed it means that I must take it as one first and then the remaining a n minus three ways similar approach therefore my recurrence relation would be a n is equal to a n minus one plus a n minus two plus a n minus three where a naught is equal to one a one is equal to two and a two also you can verify it's four yes now in this case also let's say you can say that what you will do is that for the first three position you fix one here and for the first two positions you can give any choice so either they can be zero they can be one which means there are four cases zero 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 one one zero and one one and you can say that this way can also work that the first two positions are filled in four ways then the third position in one way and the remaining position in the a n minus three ways so it gives you 
the sequence is with no block of three consecutive zero. But the question comes that does it covers because one is here, one is here, one is here. Does it cover all possible sequences? That's very important. For example, there could be a sequence where you start with 1, 1, 0 and then 1, 1, 1. But you have missed it because after 1, 1 you have fixed 1. So this gives you the sequences with no 3 consecutive zeros, but it does not mean that it is covering all the sequences. So this is also very important to remember. A coin is flipped n times, each outcome is represented as head or tail. Now the number of the outcomes with at least two consecutive heads. So again we will use the same approach that either it can start with a tail or it can start with a head. So if it starts with a tail then there are n minus 1 positions. If I do it in a n minus 1 way then it has at least two heads which implies in total there are at least two heads. If I start with H, after H now there are two possibility. Either I will go with T or I will go with H. If I go with T then A n minus two ways which ensures that the sequence has at least two H in n minus two position which ensures that in n position there are at least two heads. If after H I get H, then my condition is already fulfilled, two consecutive heads. Now in the remaining one, either there is two consecutive head, there is no consecutive head, doesn't matter. It means the remaining n minus 2 positions can be filled in 2 raised to the power n minus 2 ways, which means each position out of n minus 2 position can be filled in 2 ways, either head or tail. Because overall, this, this may not have two consecutive head. But when you see the complete picture with n position, it has for sure two consecutive heads. So the last question, find reference relation for the number of n digit ternary sequences, which means sequences made up of 0, 1 and 2, without any occurrence of subsequence 0, 1. Yes. So now if you start with 1, then there are n minus 1 positions. If you filled in a n minus 1 ways, it means that these n minus 1 position does not have 0, 1, 2. If I start with 1, then in total also it has no 0, 1, 2. If I start with 2 and same a n minus 1. So not a problem. If I start with 0 and if I choose a n minus 1 then there may be some sequence like this 1 2 then 1 2 1 2 1 2 1 1 1 something like this. Now this does not have 0 1 2 but when I combine it then it have 0 1 2. It means that if I consider a n minus 1 for this one also and out of which if I subtract all those sequences which are starting with 1 2 so 1 2 are fixed and it has no 0 1 2 in the remaining positions so in a n minus 3 no 0 1 2 so minus a n minus 3 then I will get the sequences starting from 0 which have no 0 1 2 yes because I am subtracting the one which have 1 2 here and in the remaining one I am already ensuring a n minus 3 ways so that they do not have 0 1 3 and this would also does not occur because I am subtracting this one so that's why my reference relation is a n minus 1 plus a n minus 1 plus a n minus 1 minus a n minus 3. So very very interesting question. So in the next class we will continue to see how do we write the reference relation in more complicated cases. Thank you very much.